I'm a professional mathematician and here's a beautiful exercise in real analysis in Rudin's Principles of Mathematical Analysis. I'm excited to share it with you. It says that if you have a sequence an of non-negative numbers and the series sum an diverges, then so too does the series sum an over 1 plus an. That also diverges. And this is going to be good practice with understanding series and sequences on a slightly higher level. I'll walk you through the intuition first before we get into writing the rigorous proof. So the first step I sort of think about is the information we're given is sum an diverges. And we're trying to use that information to show this sum diverges. So we want to look at the comparison test. So in other words, if we can look at this series an over 1 plus an, and somehow we can estimate it from below. Okay, so if we can estimate it from below, a series that diverges, maybe in terms of an, then we can solve the problem. Now, how do we estimate a fraction from below? Well, we want to estimate the denominator from above, right? If we can bound the denominator from above, the whole fraction is going to be bounded from below. So the way we like to do this is we say, okay, an, okay, like, how are we going to think about this? An is a series, it diverges. Now assume that an doesn't get too large. Okay, so let's say an is less than or equal to 1. Okay, maybe that's a fair assumption. We're going to have to get into that. This is just a thinking process. So if we know, for example, that an is less than or equal to 1, let's say eventually. Okay, so let's say that some an is an interesting divergence series. Okay, its limit of its terms is 0, which has to be true for a series to converge, but still it diverges. So in that situation, an less than or equal to 1 is a fair assumption as long as an is large. And in that case, we can bound from below. We can then say 1 plus an is going to be less than or equal to 2 for n sufficiently large. And then if you take the ratio, you can say this is going to be greater than or equal to an over 2. And now we see something interesting. We now see that we know the right-hand side diverges because some an diverges. Dividing by 2 is also going to diverge. And then we can conclude this also diverges using the comparison test. So long as we know that an less than or equal to 1 is true for sufficiently large n, this is true if the limit of the sequence is 0. Okay, so if limit n goes to infinity of an is 0, then you know that this is true for all sufficiently large n. Okay, so I could write this for n sufficiently large. So sometimes in analysis, they use a double greater sign to say n sufficiently large, sufficiently bigger than 0. Okay, so... How do we actually know, though, that the limit of an is equal to 0? We don't really know that. an could be a weird, uh, very basic divergence series, like it would be an equals n. Okay, that's not an interesting divergence series, but we have to solve for that too. So let's think about this series, okay? So we know that this series is definitely going to diverge if the limit of the terms is non-zero. So let's now understand, knowing that the limit of the terms is 0, assuming that, because if it's not, then it diverges. So assume that this limit of the terms is 0, what does that tell us about the limit of the terms an? Let's look at that. Okay, so if limit n goes to infinity of an over 1 plus an is equal to 0, what does that mean? Well, that means that the limit, I can write this out a little differently, an over 1 plus an, I can add 1, subtract 1. So I can say this is 1 plus an minus 1 over 1 plus an. Okay, so that limit is equal to 0. And now we're going to say that this is going to be the limit. So we can then write this as 1 plus an over 1 plus an, which is equal to 1. And then we could say minus 1 over 1 plus an. So we know that that limit is equal to 0. Now it looks like we can say something about the limit of the ans, right? Because we've just isolated an an term. So let's do that on that side of the board. All right, so if you're loving the content so far, please don't forget to smash that like button. Let me know your thoughts, how you'd approach the problem, and subscribe because I've got content across all topics and levels, from beginning math to very advanced math. I do everything. Analysis, abstract algebra, topology, beginning trigonometry, pre-calculus, calculus, everything. I'm trying to be a universal math channel. I'm a professional mathematician. It's a unique resource makes a huge difference okay it's a free content and a free like and it makes a huge difference so let's now know knowing that that limit is zero let's now therefore conclude so knowing that this limit is zero using limit laws we know the limit of one is one so therefore we know that the limit of one over one plus a n is going to equal to one right and now using limit laws we can take the reciprocal so therefore taking the reciprocal the limit of one plus a n is going to equal to one and therefore, that implies that the limit of an is going to equal to 0. So that's the key insight. If this sequence approaches 0, then this sequence has to approach 0. And if this sequence does not approach 0, it diverges. If it approaches 0, then we are going to use the estimate we did earlier. So let's just write out the proof rigorously. So I'm going to do that here. All right, so now the proof is as follows. 
just starting from the beginning, assume that the limit of the terms of this sequence is equal to zero, because if it's non-zero, we know it diverges. That's our conclusion. So assume that the limit is equal to zero. Therefore, we know by this reasoning that I just gave rigorously that the limit of the an is zero. So I'm going to write this as assume limit of an over one plus an is equal to zero, which then implies, as we just explained, that the limit of an is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if limit of an equals zero, there exists n sufficiently large. There exists a big n such that, so I'm going to abbreviate it as st, such that little n greater than big n implies that an is going to be less than or equal to one. Okay. Now we know that an is less than or equal to one. That implies that 1 plus a n is less than or equal to 2, which in turn implies that taking the reciprocals flips the inequality. 1 over 1 plus a n is going to be greater than or equal to 1 half. Now what we can do is multiply both sides by a n, knowing they're not negative. So therefore, that implies that a n over 1 plus a n is going to be greater than or equal to a n over 2 for n greater than or n. Okay, for n greater than big N. But now we know that, of course, you know, the tail end of any divergence series has to diverge because the first few terms is finite in number, so that sum is finite. So therefore, a n over 2 for n greater than n is a divergence series. Therefore, this is also a divergence series. Sum a n over 1 plus a n. There's a proof. Now, if you're loving my content and consistently gaining value from it, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or through a YouTube channel membership. They're exclusive perks. I really appreciate all the support. Huge thank you so much to Alex, Nathan, and Trang for their ongoing support on Patreon, and Enohoda Nejr, Aman, Rob, and Shabid for their ongoing support as YouTube channel members. YouTube membership sometimes appears on desktop browsers, but not through the iOS app, because Apple takes a cut through the iOS app, so that's not ideal. So checking it out on desktop browsers should make it available, or Patreon's also a great platform. So huge thank you so much for all the support, and I've got two fun videos for you. The first video, you know, loving real analysis, this is a video on the popcorn function. Okay, the popcorn function is probably one of the most important functions in real analysis. We're just going to understand this function in depth. Check it out. It's going to pop up on the screen here. And here's another video. This is just crazy. Okay, this is a function that is increasing from R to R that is discontinuous at every single rational and continuous at every irrational. So it literally jumps at every rational. How on earth do you construct that? This video is a really great introduction to so many important ideas in real analysis. You're going to be a master after watching that. And I have a whole playlist on real analysis on my channel homepage. Check out the playlist tab as well as so many other topics. You're going to love it.